and famously quoted as cautioning Kenyans to get or prepare themselves for hard times for the now, and how the resuscitation of the economy will take approximately two years. I want to assure you I haven't been misquoted. I stand by that. Two years and maybe even slightly longer. And please do not misquote me because I am saying that. I am being pragmatic, realistic, and forthright in my assessment of the dilapidated economic situation. There is no room to lie to Kenyans. And I repeat, there is no room to lie to Kenyans. We all know things went bad before Kenya Kwanzaa took over and are bad today. This experience should prompt us to work together to mitigate, to mitigate the dire situation. The government has shifted its subsidy policy from consumption to production. Hence, the few beneficiaries on the consumption side are crying out loud. For the government, the principle of majority beneficiary applies. Through the Finance Bill 2023, the government proposes to provide exemptions under the VAT Act for fertilizers and inputs of raw materials or raw materials locally purchased or imported by manufacturers of fertilizers. There's no doubt we have massive public resource leakages that are prompted by corruption. I am keenly monitoring the execution of these directives directly with the principal secretaries because the government must deliver services to Kenyans. If the poor performance is a consequence of poor governance and lack of strategy by the management of these agencies and their accountants in these corporations that are also members of ISPAC, how can they extricate themselves from blame are accountants the problem creators or just the legendary part of the problem? And what can ISPAC do to help stop pilferage of public resources? I therefore would like ISPAC to keenly reflect on what role, on what the role of accountants is in this quagmire that is the pilferage of public resources. 